Okay, uh, how's everybody doing? That's great. Yeah, first of all, uh, we, we're, we're extremely excited to, to be heading to the Sweet 16. Uh, I think uh, these guys have really paid the price to, to have this opportunity, you know, starting when they got on campus in June and, and then through all our workouts, the summer workouts, the fall workouts, and through the diversity that they've been through. So it just shows you the character of these guys uh, to be in this position. They really earned it, and uh, we're looking forward to playing a great Michigan State team. Obviously, uh, early on in the tournament, Michigan State had a little uh, bump in the road against Bradley. Is there anything you saw in, uh, in that game that you can use against them? <laughs> well, that's a good question. They're, they're, you know, first of all, they have a great Hall of Fame coach and one of the greatest coaches of all time, Coach Izzo, and he does a tremendous job. Uh, they're as good as anybody in the country on – on the off and with their offense, they're very efficient and also defensively. Uh, the, the main thing you got to do with them is you, you got to do a great job in your transition defense. You got to keep them out of transition. They score thirty percent of their points in transition, and we try to you know we got to get back and make them play against our set defense. And then uh, you know we, offensively we got to really execute because their defense they're they're number three in the country in field goal percentage defense and, and uh, scoring defense are top twenty. So we're going to have to do a great job on on you know with our offense and our defense. Our offense got to help our defense. So uh, we're looking forward to challenge. We, we had a great practice today. We'll go again in the morning, and uh, we'll do a lot of uh, film work, and, and we'll be prepared uh, for, on Friday. How much do you stress total team defense? It looks like the Spartans really spread around their scoring, and yeah. everyone's capable. Well, it, it, obviously they have a great player, uh, player of the year in the league, Cassius Winston. He's really talented. He reminds me, when I was at Marquette, uh, you guys, Kimba Walker, who's at, with the uh, Charlotte Hornets, he reminds me of Kimba, you know, with his ability to score at all three levels. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on the defense uh, in transition. And, and then they have uh, really good uh, inside players. Uh, uh, they got uh, Tillman, who's uh, very strong in the low post, and, and Nick Ward and uh, Gones, they have a really good low post. Then uh, probably the X factor is, is Matt uh, uh, McQuaid. He's a really good shooter. He's a kid I've known when I was at North Texas. I knew him a long time. Uh, I know him and know his dad. And he's a really good player, great leader for him. So they're just a solid all-around team. You mentioned Tom. I know it's the teams on the court and they have to perform. But do you, do you relish a challenge like this, going up against a guy that's pretty well-respected in the game? Well, I mean, uh, we're not going to win that battle. I'm not going to try that. <laughs> but anyway, no, coaches, i got much respect for Coach Izzo. He, obviously, his success speaks for itself. And, you know, our staff is looking forward to preparing our guys. And it's not going to be us against Coach. We'll just prepare our guys the best we can and, uh, you know, make game and in game adjust whatever we got to do to just have our guys ready to play. Uh, Tony, how, how have you, you guys played more than half your games have been decided by? You know, very close margins, a lot of the single digit games, a lot of overtime games. How, how have you dealt with that this year? I mean, how have you guys adjusted? And can that serve you well in, in, this, in a situation like this in the, in the tournament? Obviously, you've got two more close games in the tournament. Yeah. Well, uh, like we have played a lot, obviously 11 close games, I think seven or eight points, something like that, and six overtime games in the league, seven overall, six in the league. But what we try to do, I, I think, is a testament to these, these guys. I said it earlier, the, the closeness of these guys, the respect they have for one another, uh, the trust they have in one another, their ability to make plays under pressure. That's rare, you know. That's, that's rare. I've been doing this a long time. You don't see that, uh, you know, with, with young players. Sometimes, they, you know, some players tend to wilt around the pressure. These guys, they just get stronger, you know. Uh, and and I think we try to prepare them through for it. You know, we work on what we call. If you ask them, six minute games. We just finished one in practice a minute ago. We work on six minutes uh, games. We we may put them in a situation where, at six minutes ago, we're eight eight or ten points down, and they got to play it out and make good decisions uh, down the stretch and uh, and make plays. You got to have great players to. to, to to win game, close games like that. And we got guys that can make plays. Coach, you get off to a fast start against Yale. You get off to a fast start against Maryland. And then the second half's turn into kind of dog fights. How do you, if you're in that situation against Michigan State Friday, how do you combat that kind of slower second well, half? Yeah, guys, college basketball is a game of runs. I mean, you ask Duke. 
I mean, they, I think you know that's the you know greatest coach of all time, the greatest player in the game today, and they uh, played a solid UCF team. And I think you look around the, at the tournament, there's all everybody's playing close games. But uh, well, I think what we have to do is continue to, like I said, we got to prepare our guys to execute offensively solidly against a really good Michigan State team, uh, and then we got to do a good job defensively. And if we're in that position, again, we just got to make the right plays. We got to get stops defensively. You got to finish those possessions with rebounds. And then you got to go down on offensive end and grind it out and get good shots, and that's what we that's what we got to continue to do. Matt's kind of had a career that I don't think has lived up to some of the expectations that he probably had, but right now he's playing really well. He's made some had some big games. How do you um, do? You have to pay extra attention that to guys like seniors that are really coming on strong in, in these types of situations. Yeah, yeah, Billy. Uh, Matt, Matt is uh, you know he's had some injuries in his career that's kind of held him back a little bit, but he's a really good player. He's a really he'll be one of the best defenders that Trey he'll probably guard Trey that Trey's gone against. He I saw him defend Carson Edwards. He did a great job against Carson, uh, but so he, he he can make shots. He shoots about. 44% from the three-point line, and he just makes big plays for him. So we got to do a great job of uh, knowing where he's at in transition. That's the main thing. Cass, uh, Cassius does a great job of pushing the ball and looking for uh, Matt, and, and he has, he has, uh, he's made big shots for him throughout the season. So we got to do a great job on him. Uh, yeah, Brett Martel with AP. Curious if you can recall your initial thoughts when you realized that you were going to become the coaching face of this program, and what's it like now that you've been through – the SEC through the first weekend of this, and it's and it's still going on. You're getting ready for a big, even bigger stage. Well, um, all I try to do when when I was named interim is just concentrate on the kids. I mean, that's the most important thing as the players, making sure they have a great experience, making sure that not only me but the staff, uh, we, we prepare these guys to to uh, you know to play every game, make sure that they you know block out the noise. You know, and I've talked about this before. All we can concentrate on is the moment we're in today. To be the best that we can be, and and, and uh, go out and perform, and uh, that's what I try to do is just concentrate on the guys. So that's made it easier for me because it's all about their experience. Uh, how much has Tremont's size made him the player that he is? If he was six four, he'd be a different style of guy. And how much do you feel that that's pushed him to work as hard as he has? Well, I think you got to contribute that to, to Tremont's heart and his dad. I mean, you know, you probably can Google some videos when he was in the seventh and eighth grade when his dad put him through some workouts now. <laughs> I mean, I was talking to uh, Coach Jones, uh, the Yale basketball coach, and Tremont used to go up to their gym and work out all the time when he was in junior high and Yale, I think maybe even younger than that. So he's, he's putting the time, guys, and worked on his game and, uh, you know, his ball skills, his shooting ability, uh, and he's become a great def defensive player. I mean, he obviously been co-defensive player of the year, and uh, and I think he's he's become a really good leader for us too. I mean, he's a coach out there on the floor, and so uh, we're just very fortunate to have him. And uh, we're, I know he's looking forward to the matchup against Cassius on on uh, on Friday. Tony, when it when it comes to a zone defense, what is the message to the team in terms of beating it if you are to see one and? and hopefully not struggle like you did um, against Maryland? Well, I went back and looked at the zone. We had some good looks against the zone. We just settled too much. You know, you want when you attack a zone, you want to play inside, outside. You know, that, in, in a 3-2, uh, that middle was wide open. We got the ball in the eyes. He had some good shots, but he missed about three of them, in, three of them inside, and you got to contribute that to their defense. But, you know, moving forward, we got to have better ball movement. Okay, we have some set plays that we can run, but you got to make shots. At the end of the day, you got to make some shots. You know, if we had made a couple of threes early, they would have gotten away from that zone. You know, but we, we worked on that. We'll work on our execution, and we'll be prepared uh, if we play against uh, another zone if uh, Michigan State uh, presents one. How would you describe Greg Hire's uh, strengths and Coach Armstrong's strengths? And your own strengths. Like, what do you feel like you guys collectively can do together? Well, you said Coach Hire. Yes. Oh, well, oh, Coach Hire is one of the best young coaches out there. I think he does a great job with his preparation. Uh, like he has this scout. I think he, he, you know we were talking, <laughs> we were texting last night at two in the morning. You know, different things that we were looking at. You know, I was watching film. He's watching film. But uh, he's a basketball junkie. He does a great job of uh, taking an opponent and breaking them down. Uh, each player's weaknesses on what we got to do to stop those players uh, offensively. What we need to you know run to probably be effective and defensively. Uh, what, what what we got to do as far as guarding ball screens, as far as defending the post. Do we want to trap the post? Do we want to let play one on one in the post? So I think he does a great job of that. And then. Uh, uh, he's uh, very fiery. You know, Greg does. He's fire. He does a great job uh, bringing uh, a lot of energy uh, every day. And uh, I think we play off each other. You know, he's probably a little bit uh, more fiery than I am at times. And, and then uh, Bill Unstrong is probably in between both of us. <laughs> you know, Bill's probably the guy that, uh, you know, he's, he's the more calmer guy between uh, uh, the three of us. Uh, 
Uh, obviously, you guys have a pretty set rotation, but uh, I was just I'm slightly curious. Marshall Graves played some good minutes for you guys late late in the season and has not played uh, yet in the postseason. I was just wondering, if, was there a role you'd like to see him play if you could, or yeah. you don't want to mess with this, the rotation? Well, I, I think we thought about uh, – like, I, I lead a substitution up to uh, uh, Coach Armstrong. He even did that when Coach Wade was here. He kind of handles our substitution uh, for us. And, and Marshall, we thought about putting him in the other night, you know, against that zone because we know he can make he, – he's, he's not bashful. He'll put it up and he can make shots. He's one of our better shooters. So, you know, I told him to be ready. You know, Marshall, you may have to go in and make some, make some shots for us and make some plays for us. So, uh, it's a possibility, you know, he could play. So, But he's done a great job. nothing he hadn't done. The other guys have played pretty well. Uh, speaking of that zone, you struggled against that against Maryland, and it's mm -hmm. been kind of a point uh, of a problem for you guys all season. Is that yeah. something y'all worked on this week, considering the teams you're going up against? Yeah, yeah, we just we just worked uh, we just worked on uh, you know we'll work against the zone. You know, you never know. They had not ran a lot of possessions to the zone. Coach Izzo's always been a kind of a pack line man to man defensive team. You know, but uh, we'll be prepared for whatever that we uh, face this weekend. <laughs> Yeah, going off of that, I mean, how, how big of a difference is it having this, this week to prepare for a game like this rather than just the, the 36 hours or however yeah. many it was against Maryland? Yeah, well, it's, it's huge. Uh, first of all, your kids get a chance to rest. You know, we took uh, Saturday, I'm sorry, we took uh, Sunday and Monday off, uh, and our guys came back fresh. And, uh, you know, you, I, I said it the other day, you want to be, you know, light on their legs and heavy on their minds right now around this time. But we, we had a lot, get a lot of shooting in. Uh, we got, you know, our percentage may not be great. We got some guys that can make shots. So we want to make sure that they uh, get a lot of shots up during this time right now. And, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll, we'll be prepared. Step. Curious, uh, and I'm sure you've talked about this a little in the past few weeks, but for people just getting to know LSU now and getting to know you, how would you describe, um, you know, your collaboration with the assistants, and what are the areas where you really feel like you have to take charge and make the decisions? What are the areas that you like that, that you're kind of collaborating or deferring? Yeah, yeah. I, I, what I try to do is, is um, you know, we're all involved in the game plan. You know, if it's for instance like uh, the Maryland scout was Coach Armstrong, Bill Armstrong scout. Uh, but Greg Hire had input, I have input, and, and you know, we kind of break it down. We talk about what we want to do. We want to run offensively, what we need to make do defensively if we want to make changes on different things, what personnel is going to work well together. So we talk about that, and I try to manage the game. You know, when I'm – I let those guys handle the bench a lot, you know, for substitution and different things. And if we need to make adjustments, they may suggest to me, and I'll say, guys, what do you think? We may make adjustments at timeouts. And I just try to, you know, manage the game as much as uh, uh, the best I can. Right here. Uh, going into the game, the odds are not with uh, LSU as far as winning. So what is the mentality that you guys are having that's going to make this game different from the yeah. rest of the uh, well, other games? Great question. The odds went against us against Yale. They went against us against Maryland. I think everybody's picked us to lose because of our situation, adversity these guys have gone through. But I can tell you what, these guys, it just, you know, uh, this is a close group. And they respect one another. Uh, they work hard. They're giving themselves to, uh, to us coaches. And they, they want to win. You know, we know everybody's – I think our chances, everybody's picking us to, you know, not advance. But, hey, we can't control that. All we can control is our preparation and, and what we do to get ready to play an outstanding Michigan State team. And we will be ready. You talked about the Maryland matchup coming down to rebounding and, you know, getting to the glass. Where do you, where do you see the difference? Because you guys are, again, pretty similar statistically. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be the uh, uh, same motto. Hey, we got to attack the paint and we want to protect the paint. That was the you know kind of our mind going into that game. You know we got to do a good job of uh, getting in the lane and and trying. That's what we've done all year. We're not going to change. You can't change. You know no reason to try to change. You know what you've been successful with. So we'll try to make sure we uh, do a great job in the paint, getting paint touches. That's one of our game standards every game. And then we got to do a great job of protecting it, uh, getting back in transition, like I said earlier, and, and protecting our paint. Just when you have an eight-man rotation, how? much do you guys talk about fouls? You got a little hairy there in, in that last game. Yeah, we, we talked about it. You know, I think, you know, sometimes coaches say, okay, if a kid gets two fouls, you set them in the first half and, hey, we can't go home. It's like timeouts. We might as well use them all. We might as well use our fouls. But, we, you, know, some, you know, you get three, that's different. So, you know, we may let them play a little bit, trust them a little bit more and play with two fouls, depending on who the, the player is, you know. Uh, so that's we talked about that. 
Uh, Coach, you guys always talk about paint touches. It's been a consistent uh, factor in your guys' strategy this year. But but how much can this team, I guess, maybe improve in, in transition? How do you view your transition offense, fast break points, things like that? Well, well the key, uh, we, we're pretty good in transition, but you got to get the rebound if you want to. You know, you don't want to keep getting it out of the net. You know, so what we try to do if we if we have great defensive possessions, you know, get stops. And then we rebound the ball, we can get out in transition because we, we're athletic, our bigs can run, our guards can make plays in transition. So that's the whole key to transition offense. He, you know, and, and then if, even if they do score, we can still run on makes sometimes. But we'd rather run, you know, getting stops and rebounding the ball, you know, on misses. That's what we like to do. You've got a roster full of closers. You know, they've proven it in these tight games. Is, is that something that's inherent in the kids, or do you guys develop through your six minute? games and you develop it through the course of a season like this where you have so many tight games? Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's the character of these guys when you look at it. You know, we've got some guys that have been winners, you know, in their high school careers. And, and, and so that really helps, you know, when you got a, guys that have ability to make plays uh, off the bounce or off the pass. I mean, for instance, Tremont can go create his own shot or create a shot for his teammates. Skylar Mays can do the same. Javante can do the same. Nas is able to go in the post or create off the bounce. So we got several guys that can make plays, and that, that, that's great. That's, when you have that as a coach, that makes your job a lot easier. Okay. Uh, Jav Javante seems to be pressing a little bit. Is that something that you guys have noticed? And is there a way to work him into a game a little bit smoother than has already happened? Yeah, we, we talked to him about that. You know, I just told him, just play with confidence. You know, he's got a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, Javante, if you have, you know, offensively, if you have a good shot, take it. You know, that's what we want him to do. I want him to be aggressive. You know, that's his nature. You know, when he plays, he's, he's really good when he's aggressive. We don't want him playing passive. We told him, hey, just stay aggressive. That's, the, that's what we want him to do. Kind of a big picture. I'm, I imagine you're probably past this in your mind, but you understand because you've been in the Sweet 16 before as an assistant. Like, the farther you go, the more media scrutiny there is, and your kids are going to be asked all these questions that they've already been asked for mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks. Are you still talking about how to prepare them for that, or how to? I mean, do you address that with them at all as to how to face that onslaught? Yeah. You know, or is, do you feel like it's already it's already settled? Well, no, I mean, you're right. I think the the more success you have, the more, you know, scrutiny or questions that you're going to be asked or whatever. But I think our guys, we, we, we just, again, we, we're going to stay in the moment. That's all we can. We only can control what we can control. And that's, the, you know, getting better every day and preparing for who our next opponent is. We can't control the perif you know, peripheral noise, uh, you know, what's out there. But we, all that we can do is control what's in our, you know, our locker room and our huddles and, and, our, and just getting better every day.